guys, I've got another request video for you guys. So today we are taking a look at two of the 12 piece Simi Art mini palettes. We have candy and we have skin tones. Now we've talked about Simi Art in the past. So is this redemption for Simi Art or am I gonna feel the same way I felt about that larger palette? You guys are gonna have to watch to find out. So you guys voted for it. Today we're taking a look at the See Me Art Skin and Candy Watercolor Set. Not too long ago, we took a look at the See Me Art 90 Color Watercolor Set and I wasn't really that impressed, but these seem to have a different format and they did come recommended to me, so I thought they were worth a second glance. Both these sets were purchased off of AliExpress. They have four other options available. I will link everything I can for you guys down in the description below. So make sure you check for show notes. They came individually packaged. They say skin, watercolor set, artist quality, 12 skin tone colors, one light and portable metal box, one color chart. I assume that is the color chart and they are made in China. If you're interested in learning more about See Me Art, hopefully you'll check out the 90 color review because I talk about it a lot more there. Then we have the candy set, candy watercolor set, artist quality, 12 candy colors, one light and portable metal box, one color chart, and I assume that is our color chart. And these really remind me of those repackaged Mungyo sets like the Jane Davenport's and the Prima Marketing. And then there's like another one that I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're all kind of the same thing. This seems very similar to that. So the other 12 color sets available are Ocean and Forest, Morandi, and then of course our Skin and Candy sets. And these are available both in metal tins and in plastic pans, which is a little bit confusing. I'm not sure why they're offering both, but it seems like the plastic sets are a little bit cheaper. On AliExpress, their swatch code their swatch cards show really saturated colors with some granulation. That's one of the reasons I decided to give these a second chance. But that was not, absolutely not, my experience with the 90 color set. And I had actually been kind of convinced into trying the 90 color set because there's an artist in the Philippines who makes really beautiful art for Simi Art using Simi Art watercolors. So I kind of figured that if somebody could use these to make such beautiful art, they must be somewhat decent watercolors. But as you guys know from watching my unboxing swatch for this, I did not like these at all. Now the reviews on AliExpress for these are also decent. People are talking about not getting used up too quickly, good colors, good color payoff in general. So I'm really hopeful that this is a higher quality watercolor than what they put into this set here, especially because the price point for this is around $30. $30 for 90 watercolors. You, you can't really expect a whole lot from it. You know what I mean? Whereas these are more around eight to $10. So that makes a little bit more sense. The packaging is a little difficult to get into if you're approaching it from the top. As you guys saw, I kind of tore the skin set box a little bit. If you approach it from the bottom, it's a lot easier as we did with the candy set. There is no screening, no labeling, nothing to tell you which set is which or who makes which set. And what I think is kind of interesting is we have seen this palette design around. You can buy these from Meaden. So I kind of think that Simi Art might have either purchased this for packaging or maybe they're the ones who manufacture it. But I do think it's a little weird that these two tins don't match. If you guys have the metal tins of the Ocean Slash Forest and the Morandi sets, let me know if it comes in the black tin, if it comes in the colorful tin, or if every different theme set has a different tin, which would be kind of interesting. But then it doesn't really make sense that skin is coming in a black tin, I would think almost anything else maybe a gold would look good for that but maybe i'm overthinking it maybe they're just going with whatever's cheapest both of them also came wrapped in plastic bags which i why why do you need the extra it's already in a cardboard packaging that has like a plastic matte coat on it why do we need the additional waste 
I don't need the additional ultra thin plastic. It doesn't make me feel any better, but both tins are pretty standard for these kinds of little tins. Uh, they have a little ring hook on the back, not particularly sturdy. And generally when traveling, I need to tape these shut because they always manage to find a way to pop open. That's not really a comment against Seam Yarn, just a precaution if you're using these, just tape them when you're traveling so you don't end up with your half pans everywhere. Inside we have 12 half pans. We also have a swatch card. The candy swatch card appears to be on cellulose. It doesn't have any of the names printed on it. Whereas the skin tone swatch card, this might be a cotton rag paper, which is a little bit surprising. It's certainly nicer than this paper. It has a nicer texture and it has everything labeled, but it doesn't appear like any of this is in order. So I would have to figure out which color is which and these half pans aren't labeled. So that's um, sure something, I guess. Now, one of the reasons I was interested in these sets is that they do actually seem to be a bit different than the 90 color set that kind of burnt me. So again, we have unlabeled, very plain packaging, has a little latch, which I actually like the little latch. And then inside, we have two swatch cards, a black one, and then the regular one, a water brush, and then all these little chiclets of paint. And I think we're getting more paint with these 12 color sets. And what I'm hoping is that these are higher quality watercolors than these. Y'all really gotta watch the unbox and swatch for this. I'll include like a minute segment just to kind of like recap it for you guys, but I really hated this set. And people were really excited for the See Me Art set and I was really excited for the See Me Art set and it was just a huge disappointment. So I'm really hoping I don't get burned again. I've heard really good things about these sets. So I'm hoping that they'll kind of pan out for us today. So to be real with you guys, the more I look at this swatch card as compared to just what we have here unswatched, the less confident I am that I could match these colors to this. Some of them more so like flesh pink. This is probably flesh pink, although this could be flesh pink. And then what is this bright yellow? Is that supposed to be gold? Because it's kind of like, if we look at this, it's like a chartreuse sort of color. And then of course these aren't labeled either. That would make it a little bit easier. And then we've got a bunch of mass tones. So what I'm kind of thinking about doing is just ignoring the names and just swatching it in the order that it's in and just kind of going with that because as it is right now, I can't really tell. I don't know if mine got all knocked out of order in transit or, and they also don't snap in very well. Like usually with these kind of half pans, they really snap in to these palettes a little snugly. These are very, very loose. And then the extruded chiclets that are inside, I guess they're in pretty sturdy now that I'm like messing around with these, but. They, they seem very, like very dry little chiclets. So. But you know what? I paid $10 each for these and the Prima Marketing and the Art Alternative, see that's the name of the one I couldn't remember, and the Jane Davenport ones, those are all like from $24 to $34 and they're just reskinned Mungyo watercolors. So, you know, these might impress me, especially because it, mentally I'm kind of comparing them against my experiences with those because it's the same sort of idea. It's a themed mini color palette in a mini tin kind of designed for travel. I have rehomed all of my Jane Davenport and Prima Marketing watercolors because I didn't really love them and uh, I thought that they should go to somebody who will use them and love them. So I don't have any to compare you know, directly, but I do have the Mungyo watercolors. So I'm going to be kind of mentally comparing them against the Mungyo watercolors. And I'll let you guys know throughout the video, how these compare against the Prima marketing slash Jane Davenport watercolors as well as how they compare against the much bigger, very cheap see me art watercolor tin. So today we're going to swatch on their included swatch cards. We're going to swatch on the Blick Studio cotton rag watercolor paper that I use as kind of my default. We're gonna maybe do some color mixing, although with the way these kind of theme palettes go, they're not really designed for a lot of color mixing. So 
we'll see, but I'm probably not going to do that. We're going to do a mud test, depending on how many optical brighteners are apparent from the get-go. I'm going to compare these to the 90 color Seamy Art palette that I reviewed for you guys. And I'm also going to compare them to the Jane Davenport slash Prima Marketing palettes in case you guys are interested or just like me are a sucker for these sort of cute themed mini palettes. That way we can figure out if it's worth paying extra for the white labeled products or if these are just as good. For the duration of these swatches, I'm gonna start with the candy palette and then move on to the skin tone palette. And you can tell it's the candy palette because it actually kind of looks like candy. Whereas the skin tone palette is more of a neutrals palette with a couple of, I mean, some of the darker browns are definitely skin tones, but there's a lot of ochres in this for it to just be a skin tone palette. And I think calling it neutrals would have been more honest about what it is with the exception of that right there, but it wouldn't have sold as well. So I just spritzed this with water and you guys can actually start to see how where it was hit with water it's turning white. While that is not like the only sign that there are optical brighteners afoot, it's definitely a sign that optical brighteners are afoot. Now, is that the end all be all? Absolutely not. First of all, this is a pastel palette. We expect optical brighteners to be used in a pastel palette. If they're not using some PW6 to make these pastels, then what else are they using? And I have reviewed other pastel palettes here on the channel. I believe I reviewed it, Pastel Dreams, so it must be Prima Marketing. And I did that during a live stream. So I will dig that up and try to link that for you guys because that is actually pretty similar to this. And while I didn't love Pastel Dreams, there are a lot of other people who do enjoy Pastel Dreams. So if you like that palette, you might also like this one. So I just wanted to kind of point that out to you guys. Although it is a little red flaggy when you spritz a dark brown and another dark brown and it looks like chocolate milk on there that's kind of a clue but just in general you know on these pastel colors we we are going to be expecting some optical brighteners i don't ever expect pastels to handle quite the same way that regular watercolors do and they did a little bit of granulation testing kind of the same way i do with super granulating watercolors i might include that in my swatches as well just for fun because that does seem like a very cute use for these watercolors and if they have some like fun chunky granulation in the pastels that could actually be really pretty unfortunately i lost the show notes for these so i'm going to try to transcribe them to the best of my ability down in the comments below but these pastel colors they just do not have the oomph and impact and color that they should for pastels generally i don't really review a lot of pastel watercolors um, I've explained why in the in this video, so I'm not going to go into it right now, but I'm kind of mentally comparing these against the pastel dreams, which I did review and I think they're very similar to, and those actually have a lot of impact. These really don't. I think these are dye based rather than whatever Prima Marketing slash Mungyo is doing with the pastel dreams, but these just don't have much impact at all. I have swatched the candy set. So far, so good. The colors are looking pretty decent. Some are not quite as intense as I would like, but that doesn't mean they're underperforming. It just means they're not particularly saturated colors. So next, we're gonna move on to the skin tone set, and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm going to ignore the color names because, like I said, they've gotten all out of order, and I'm just gonna focus on swatching them in the order that they're in right now quote-unquote skin tone set which is really more of like a neutral set with a yellow and a few skin tones in there is very similar in terms of my concerns to the candy set we should be seeing some granulation we should be seeing some pigmentation generally these kind of neutrals are earth pigments which are very cheap pigments and they tend to have a very pronounced personality in terms of opacity and granulation these have no personality at all and i kind of suspect that they are possibly a dye based watercolor that's been kind of put onto some sort of substrate that can then be poured into half pans so sometimes chalk is used for that
both sets swatched fairly saturated. I don't really understand the discrepancies between the sets. Like, I don't understand why this one comes in a black palette with a little cotton rag swatcher, whereas this one comes in a multicolor palette with a little cellulose paper swatcher. These kind of inconsistencies are just, I mean, I bought them from the same vendor and they are just different versions of the same idea. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But next, we are gonna swatch both sets on Blick Studio Cotton Rag Watercolor Paper. We're gonna be looking at opacity, which obviously we expect to see some opacity today. We're also gonna be looking at how they blend out. And I was thinking about doing a little bit of a wet into wet granulation test, kind of the same way I do with the super granulating colors. But to be fair, I'm gonna go ahead and test them out on a cotton rag paper. I'm doing my usual swatch out tests for both sets and I'm also doing kind of a granulation test and this was kind of inspired by what I saw on the listing which I will dig up and make sure to link for you guys. Man, y'all, the listing sells these. I really thought these were going to be a lot better than the other See Me Art kit because a lot of these kind of ODM slash OEM watercolors offer multiple tiers of quality and sometimes when you're buying them from a third party vendor it can be difficult to ascertain which tier of quality you're receiving. I was hoping these would actually be a higher tier of quality than the other See Me Art kit that I reviewed for you guys, but no, not really. Basically the same thing in a different format. So for both sets, I am looking for granulation. I'm looking to see how they wash out. I'm looking at how much they muddy or pollute the water. As you guys can see, we got some chocolate milk here. I'm looking at activation and I'm gonna be looking at liftability. And on all accounts, these fail. They don't deliver any interesting color. You lose most of your color once you add water. They basically turn to nothing. The skin tone palettes is very yellow ochre heavy. There's a lot of yellow ochres in this palette and then you know nothing is actually labeled so if your paints get out of alignment who knows what colors you're working with these definitely seem like a dye based watercolor because they really just fall apart which was my problem with see me art in the first place i really wanted to give them a chance at redemption and give them the benefit of the doubt but i don't think i'm going to be wasting my money reviewing any more see me art products because they basically just seem to be the same thing different day Something that surprised me about these swatches is we're not really seeing a lot of opacity up here and we're not really seeing a lot of opacity down here either. And I really thought both from the way these polluted the waters to, I mean like, look, literally, look at them. They're pastel. I thought we were gonna have some opacity. Wh wh what? Like compared to the pastel dreams, those things had a lot of opacity to the point of being kind of chalky and kind of gritty. These. They just don't have any real impact. They just kind of seem like they're gonna fall apart. These, pretty much the same thing. What is particularly telling to me is that our ochres, no granulation in our ochres, and we've got like five ochres in here. There's a burnt umber and a Van Dyke brown in here. They, they look like they're dye based. Now, I was talking to another artist who used to work at a watercolor paint manufacturing company and who is just very interested in watercolor manufacturing in general. And they were saying that they've seen artists online take a dye based medium and then precipitate it out onto chalk and use that to turn it into half pans. And I mean, I don't know for sure. None of these companies ever respond back. And that's not really something a company would, you know, really be happy to admit. But generally, when we can't find pigment information about something, that could be an option. And when it comes to Simi art, especially with some of these colors, I really feel like that or something very similar to that is what they're doing. So next I want to do the lift test and then we're going to move on to the wet into wet test. Now, so I have here these kind of like wet into wet like sedimentation tests. These don't really look anything like the ones that they have on the AliExpress listing. The ones on the AliExpress listing are kind of what sold me on these. and. They, they tend to fall apart really quickly in water. So I don't have the highest hopes for our wet into wet test. For the lift test, we should expect to see some colors lifting more than others because they should be using different pigments, but no, they basically lift the same amount. They are all 
very staining. Some might lift up just a little bit, but there's still a lot of color left on the paper. We're not getting anywhere near approaching the white of the paper for any of these colors. And some of those yellow ochres theoretically should be very lifting because theoretically they would be very opaque and very granulating colors. So both surprisingly and not surprisingly at all, none of these lift. So it's surprising because generally they sort of pastel colors that would utilize PW6 to help give them some pastel pastelicity and opacity would be pretty prone to lifting. Not surprising because this is pretty in keeping with the Simi Art review I did earlier. So this just seems to be like their brand. And it's definitely in keeping with watercolors that utilize a dye solution for their actual color. So kind of disappointing, but not really, dis not really surprising. So next we're gonna do our wet into wet test. And if you guys are new here, if you're not familiar with what that entails, I'm gonna use another piece of Blick Studio cotton rag watercolor paper. I'm gonna slop a bunch of water down on the paper. We're going to slop a bunch of color down on the paper and we're gonna see what happens. And honestly, it tells us a lot about how the watercolors are gonna handle in kind of a more real world scenario. It gives me a really good idea of what to expect from these if I should use them for a field test. Now, Rather than doing each individual palette as a wet into wet test, I'm just going to do both palettes at the same time. It's going to look like mud, but I mean, I'm fully expecting that. Finally, the place where everything seems to fall apart, the wet into wet or the mud test. So as you guys know, we're going to slather a lot of color on here. We're also going to slather a lot of water on here and we're going to see how well these mix into each other, if anything granulates, and if everything just kind of falls apart. And I'm trying to grab just different colors from both sets. I'm trying to grab colors that kind of work well with each other just to kind of give it, you know, the best chance possible of colors blending nicely and there being good and appealing transitions. No, not really. Like with the other Simi Art watercolors, they might oof, and some of them are not even passable at all, but then when it dries, it's even worse. Ugh, oh, man, I, I definitely got fooled with this one and I'm trying not to sound bitter. I'm just glad I can share this information with you guys because there are better sets out there that do this exact thing. Jane Davenport has a neutral set that while overpriced performs a lot better and Pastel Dreams is a lot better than the candy set. The pastels go down really pretty and they seem like with this much water they might granulate a bit. Unfortunately, that never really happened. The colors in both sets are really just kind of soft. There's not really a lot of impact with really any of them. Several of the pinks do basically nothing and the fuchsia isn't much better. Only the yellows, wait, yellow, yellow, orange only these kind well the orange looks like a yellow gee only the yellows really seem to have any kind of real impact which again it's disappointing but not really that surprising so talking about disappointing these aren't really that different from the 90 color palette of Simi art watercolors in fact i think that some of these colors come from this palette i couldn't tell you exactly which ones are which but I mean, maybe the fuchsia is a little bit different, but they just swatch so non-existent. They just, not a lot there. Uh, the skin tone, which is more like a neutrals palette, is really definitely more from this than from this, but they utilize different color names like red ochre and red redwood and caramel and things like that. So I think they do have some new colors or different colors in these, but I think there's a lot of repeats from this. And I didn't really like the 90 palette. I mean, the base colors didn't really have a lot of impact. And then the neons and the shimmer colors didn't really have a lot of impact. It was 90 colors of not really much to show for it. 
and hopefully uh, you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about when I say some of these feel and look like dye base colors like colors that we would typically see granulation it's just clean it's just flat color it's like we'd used high, not hydrous um radiant watercolors a very obvious dye base watercolor for that and I feel like the same is true for both the candy and the skin set just not a lot of impact you add water and they basically turn to nothing you don't get any granulation you don't get any opacity these are like almost like ghost watercolors I mean some colors kind of show up but the majority of these palettes the majority of these colors there's just nothing to them they fall apart as soon as you add water i've given away the pastel dreams palette a while back i think I, I know they sent me two by accident and i gave away one of them and i think i gave away the other but it might be you know kicking around somewhere in a box so i don't know where it is so i'm not gonna pull it out but <laughs> look if you like pastel watercolors and they have their place is Pastel Dreams my favorite pastel watercolors? Absolutely not. I really like Holbein's. I like PWC. I like Kusakabe's pastels. Generally, Japanese pastel watercolors. Turner Watercolors, another Japanese brand. Generally, Japanese pastel watercolors just perform a little bit better. They're a little easier to use. I prefer those when I'm going for pastels over the Pastel Dreams. But compared to the Pastel Dreams, which is a little bit more ubiquitous, more people know about it, they are leagues apart so the pastel dreams watercolors have some flaws they are chunky they are chalky they are gritty but they show up to the party and they have the opacity that you would expect from pastel watercolors whereas the candy palette doesn't the candy palette is just like such a it looks good it looks good in these half pans like if you wanted to set up a display where you pretended like you were a watercolor artist and you didn't want to spend a lot of money these are cute they look like candy watercolors they're adorable they're very aesthetic whereas the pastel dreams they're a little bit grittier but they're still very pastel and cute maybe not as cute as this it looks like candy you know but the pastel dreams is a better palette than this now if you can get the pastel dreams for about 15 dollars, i'd say that's a fair price and they're mung yo watercolors so they're fine they're not the best they're not the worst but if they're charging 30 dollars for the pastel dreams <laughs> don't don't just skip it just skip it so you know compared to if we're going like the $10 price point versus the $15 price point I'd say go ahead and get the pastel dreams at $15 but you know I, I it's I, I feel like I can't endorse any of it I, I, I skip please skip the CME art yeah there are artists who can use these to make beautiful illustrations I'm not one of them and there are better watercolors on the market at a similar price point that you're probably going to be happier with so just get those get the paul rubens paul rubens is fine i like paul rubens plenty fine get the i can't say get the the caam watercolors because a they, oh boy they got they got a lot of drama around them and they got a lot of problems and they're they're also very gritty um get Mungyo watercolors get at not at your at your liver price anyway there's there are other watercolors that are going to be better than the simi art and they're going to make you happier and if you like theme sets there are other companies that are doing theme sets that the watercolors just perform better now that said there's some pros to this i don't love these palettes but there's some pros to this so we're going to talk about the pros and cons of these two palettes so the pros of these palettes they come in these paints come in reusable metal palettes these are pretty standard metal palettes they also have reusable half pans so you could if you get these and you don't like them you can pry them out and you can reuse the half pans and you can reuse the palettes with your own preferred paint so it's not a total loss and the cost of a palette like this is about what I paid for these with the paint inside. So I don't really feel like I got totally cheated out of my money. And frankly, unless I have a friend who really wants to give these a try, and quite possibly I do, um, they might see this and be like, oh man, I got to see for myself. Um, 
I might just do just that. I might just pry out the paint and just utilize the half pans because palettes like this cost about as much as I paid for this set anyway. So it's not like I've like lost money on it if I can salvage the half pans and salvage the palettes. And shoot, they look pretty in these half pans. I mean, they look pretty. They're very aspirational artists. Like if I wanted to set up an artist display, if I, if I ran like an anthropology and was doing a window display, like I might as well get these. They look good in the half pans. So the cons, these paints have basically no impact, no saturation, no granulation, no opacity. If we're not talking about the paint, the palettes they come in, which are fine palettes, very reusable palettes. To me, they have no redeeming qualities at all. So like, are they the worst thing I've ever reviewed? No, the Xyli W watercolors are worse than these. The pink Giorgione palette is probably worse than these. But I just, there's comparably priced palettes that are so much better. So, you know, I can't recommend them. I, I can't at all recommend them. I don't even know if I'm gonna do a field test with these because I have a feeling they're gonna make me so angry and I'm gonna be so disappointed in the resulting art that it might honestly just be better if I don't do a field test, if I don't do that to myself. So if you're disappointed to hear that, I'm sorry. Let me know in the comments, I guess. If you guys really wanna see me field test these, I will. But I'm, let me tell you this, I am not field testing both the 90 color palette and these palettes. I'm either doing these palettes or the 90 color palette because honestly they're basically like the same thing just a little bit different colors so to save myself some sanity and to save myself some time i'm either doing this palette with the oh man look at the shimmer covers colors have no shimmer to them even that grabby set i reviewed for y'all is way 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 better than this this is what is see me art what are you doing what is what is going on here did in a world where there are so many companies making watercolors and racing to the to the bottom in terms of price, what are, what are we do what are we doing here? What what is this about? And that's kind of how I feel about this too. Like, what is this about? And I'm sure some of you guys are really disappointed because these came recommended. There are people who really like these, and I really liked the idea behind them. I liked the potential color selection. I, they're not for me. I don't like how they, they handle on the paper. I feel like they don't have any color impact. If you use these and you make art, I'd love to see your art. I'm, I'm sure you do a beautiful job with it. I'm just curious like how someone can get the most out of these because they just don't really have a lot going for them in how I paint. And um, I don't remember if I really mentioned this in today's review, but I am a watercolor comic artist. I paint the comic Seven Inch Kara. You can read it at sevenincharacom for free, or you can buy a volume and that helps support me as an artist. I won't say it helps support the channel, but it sure feels nice and it makes me happy. And when I'm happy, I tend to do more nice things for the channel. So in the end, it all kind of shakes out. But I like to do a lot of layers. I like really saturated colors. I like good color impact. I like a lot of granulation. So basically everything I like, these cannot do. But that's the beautiful thing about art and YouTube. There are so many different kinds of artists. There are so many different art styles. Just because I don't like them doesn't mean they are not a good fit for somebody else, but it also means I can't recommend these because I don't like them. And I don't recommend stuff that I don't like. Tip, unless I know it's an ID 10T error on my part. I'm, I don't recommend stuff I don't like. So yeah, I, I'm not gonna be able to recommend these palettes unless you are putting together a window display and you want some cute looking palettes. I mean, they're very cute looking palettes and they're pretty cheap, so that could be a way to do it. But other than that, these were very disappointing. I'm glad that the, ha the palette itself was so cheap because like normally you would pay around $8 on Amazon for these little half pan palettes anyway. So it kind of works out. Um, and yeah, that's that's all I got. I, I was hoping I would like these. I think I was also sort of expecting that they would be better. I think I was fooling myself that they would be better than these. I mean, like we already talked about it. We're going to talk about it again. Like these look like a joke. Look at them. They're like very dry little extruded chiclets in a really thin, flimsy plastic liner. Like these are not good. But these look like they could be good. And that's how I got kind of tricked or I tricked myself. Um, I can't, I can't blame Simi Art. It's not like they were trying to convince me to, to buy these. I, that was all my own doing. 
So anyway, I hope that this was helpful, useful, and informative. I had fun swatching them and talking to you guys regardless. Like even though I'm not happy with them, I don't feel like this was a waste of time. I think I probably will help someone else avoid watercolors that would frustrate them and make them not happy or maybe not maybe lead to them not liking their own art i've got a lot of watercolors i do like so before i say goodbye to you guys i think i want to tell you guys some that i do like let's let's leave on a more positive note let me leave you with something that you can like act upon rather than leaving you with a bummer as you guys know, I'm a comic artist, and if you haven't checked out my comics yet, I hope you'll check out 7inch Kara. You can read the first eight chapters for free at 7inchkara.com, and if you enjoy the story, you can buy your own copies at 7inchkara.com shop. If you're a fan of Studio Ghibli, Anne of Green Gables, or Cottagecore, I think you'll really enjoy 7inch Kara. So this is not all inclusive. These are just a few that I grabbed that were nearby. So this is the Superior Folding Palette. I reviewed this and I really liked it. It really surprised me. Yes, these are student grade watercolors. The price point is pretty similar. Oh, hey, look, we have a bunch of pastels. They're actually really cute. Um, I did both a field test and an unboxing swatch. So if you wanna see how these handle, I got you covered. I like this just so much better than the see me art watercolors like these are just so much more fun the form factor is fun it's not as refillable or reusable but that's that's not the biggest most egregious thing you can pry these out and reorganize them and I wish superior would just sell these weird chiclet refills so that you know you could reuse this palette but the format is fun the layout is fun they remind me of Gensai colors you've got a lot of pastels I prefer these over the Simi Art. This Paul Rubens palette absolutely delighted me. First of all, it is just super duper cute. So if you are here for the aesthetic art supplies, and I won't lie, I am also here for the aesthetic art supplies, I just expect them to perform, then this palette, y'all. And look, Paul Rubens makes other really cute palettes, okay? They've got some where it's like stars on the front in water. I wish I'd gotten that palette just because that is like 100% me, like my aesthetic since I was like three. This is very cute though. It's, it's kind of like a makeup compact. It's got little pebbles and then little beads. I wish they'd put like a layer of resin. That's really my big, that and it doesn't shut properly are my two biggest qualms. And the colors inside are, they, they deliver, they perform, they show up. The form factor is super cute. It's tiny, it's pocket size. It's just, it's just a delight to be really, to be really honest. And I think you guys will, this is around $20. I think you guys will enjoy this palette so much more than these. Then we have this one. I recently reviewed this. I think, I think Paul Rubens rebranded this as the Mei Liang Pigments Palette, which I also really like, but that's packed up right now because I just used it in an art, just used it in an art class and I don't feel like going to get it. But this is also a pretty decent one. Nice, bright, vibrant colors. They actually show up to the party. It's not pastels, but I really like the colors in this. The only thing is their neutrals are kind of weak but they're still, I think, better than the neutrals because they don't look like they're dye-based compared to the Simi Art. And then I mentioned like Prima Marketing, I mentioned Art Alternatives, I mentioned Jane Davenport. Those are all white label labeling Mungyo watercolors and then reselling them under their brand name. You can buy those if you want, especially if you see them on sale, like they're fine. However, generally they're kind of overpriced, so I say just buy them from the source. This is the 48 half pan set from Meng Yo. You guys can see a little gritty. That's that's my biggest qualm. They are very saturated. You get a lot of color with them. You don't get as many pastels as you would like. You could maybe find some of the pastels. Honestly, even though I know Meng Yo makes the Pastel Dreams watercolors, I haven't actually seen those colors on the Meng Yo website or sold anywhere except the Pastel Dreams. So and they're not, you don't see them here either really, except for like a one, one peachy kind of skin tone color. But you're gonna be a lot happier with this set than you are with these sets. And I, 
think the Hmong Yeos are around $35 to $40. So they're still pretty affordable and you can probably find them for less. So there are definitely some comparable price watercolors that are just way better. Either they are just more saturated or they're more saturated and come in a really fun format or they come in a fun format. They're just better watercolors than what we're dealing with today and you get the pastels. But I wanted to give you guys some alternatives in case you're looking for some fun watercolors that are fairly affordable. I would recommend these over the Simi Art watercolors. That is two more of the watercolor palettes that you guys requested I review in the can. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to vote in that poll and let me know what you want to see. I am going to probably post a big photo with like what I have left and ask you guys to vote again because frankly that seems to work well. You guys enjoy voting. I enjoy hearing and working on what you guys are interested in. So it's like win-win for everybody. I am sorry <laughs> these didn't turn out better. I was hoping they would. They are just just not for me and if they were for you let me know maybe maybe I'm missing something maybe there's some use case or way of handling that they really really shine and I am just not that's just not what I do you know so I'm definitely open to that idea and I'm open to seeing your art I want to see your art so if you want to see my art you guys can check me out on TikTok, on Instagram on Twitter on Facebook all natto soup same as the channel name i had fun unboxing and swatching these with you guys i hope you guys found this useful helpful and informative because i enjoyed doing it for y'all let me know in the comments what you guys thought and hopefully i'll see you guys again soon with either another tutorial or another art supply review So I have to admit, I was kind of disappointed. I was really, honestly, earnestly hoping that these palettes would be a little bit different from the original Simi Art palette that we reviewed. They do seem like they're a little bit higher market with individual tins that could be reused for other types of watercolors rather than that kind of weird clamshell tin that the other Simi Art watercolors are in. They're in individual half pans and the paints themselves just seem like they would be a little bit higher quality than what we saw with the 90 piece set. But unfortunately, it's the same paints, just in a different packaging. So my conclusion with this is there are other themed sets like this on the market that might be a little bit more expensive, but they're gonna be a lot more usable and you're probably going to be happier with what you get. Like for example, the Pastel Dreams palette that is sold by, I I think it's art alternatives. I think they rebranded. It used to be Prima Marketing and it used to be Watercolor Confections, but I think it's rebranded since. Um, those are actually Hmong Yo watercolors like we talked about earlier, and those are gonna make you a lot happier than these. These are cute, but they just don't really hold up. And the skin tone set is even worse. So I expected some optical brighteners with the, especially with the candy set, because those are supposed to be pastels. I was expecting a lot of PW6, but frankly, these colors have no impact at all. And then the skin tone set, there's no granulation. Not even, there's like a million ochres in this, ochres. They're not using ochre pigment, but there's a million ochre colors in this set. Like it's like a granulating yellowish earth tone. Uh, none of them granulate. I'm pretty sure these are all dye-based watercolors that have been fixed to a different substrate, maybe like chalk, so that they can be put into a pan and then used like that. And uh, I'm just not really a fan of that media. I don't really like dye-based watercolors outside of watercolor markers all that much. That's why you guys don't see me use Echo Lines or Radiant watercolors too often. It's just, it's it's too clean, it's too plasticky for my, my style and how I like to paint. Um, some of my favorite artists like Nashi uses them and does a beautiful job with them. It's just not for me. And uh, the same goes for these paints. They're just not for me. And I have to say, 
I don't feel like these Simi Art mini palettes redeem themselves. I cannot say that I feel like they're worth your time or money, but I think the Frugal Crafter also reviewed them. So if you're looking for a second opinion, you might want to check her review out when you're done here. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I, even though I wasn't impressed with these watercolors, I had a really good time hanging out with y'all and painting with y'all. You guys can also see from our wet into wet test, there's just not a lot of impact. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a comparison in case you're new and you haven't watched any of my other reviews before. This is the wet into wet test from the Owen watercolors that I also recently reviewed that you guys also requested. And that is a 24 piece set, I believe. And you guys can see there's just so much more impact. There's just so much more color and saturation and oomph. And that's really more what I'm looking for with these kind of budget student grade watercolors than this. These don't even show up. They didn't bother to come. They didn't even phone and they texted and said, yeah, I can't make it. So they themselves are kind of disappointing, but I'm really glad that I was able to review them for you guys and hopefully help you guys find watercolors that will make you happier. I've got a ton of both student grade and professional grade watercolor reviews here on the channel. I am sure I've got something you've liked. And even during this review, I talked about some watercolors that I think you guys will like better. So hopefully you'll check out those reviews and check out those watercolors. If you end up getting any of them and liking them, let me know. I'd love to hear back from you guys. And Hmm. All right. What is your favorite? We can, it could be something we've talked about already on the channel. It could be something I've never ever heard of. What is your favorite pastel watercolor? Are you a fan of the pastels and the Kurataki Gensai Tambi line? Are you a fan of pastel dreams? Do you like Kusakabe's pastel watercolors? Do you like Turner pastel watercolors? Do you like Holbein pastel watercolors? Do you like me a little bit kind of feel like pastel watercolors are just a, a cheap version a cheap a knockoff version of gouache and that if i want that much opacity and oomph i'm just going to use a tube of gouache or do you prefer to mix your own by using some titanium white or a different white? maybe you like to use buff and get kind of a creamy pastel like a, a vintage a more randy kind of pastel going let me know down in the comments below what is your favorite way to go pastel with watercolors or do you just add buku watercolor buku water to your watercolor so that you get a really thin wash and get pastel watercolors by utilizing the white of the paper let me know what your preferred method is down in the comments i am not giving shade to anyone at all i personally am a big fan of holbein and i like turner and I like Kusakabi, and I like the Gensai Tambi. And when I really want like a really opaque sort of pastel going on, I'll probably go to gouache and I frequently mix my own. So to me, all are pretty good, but I wanna hear what you guys think. So if you are new here, hi, I'm Becca. I am a watercolor comic artist. I paint the watercolor comics Seven Inch Kara, which you guys can check out at sevenincharacom And watercolor for comics and watercolor for picture book illustration is kind of the lens through which I see watercolor. There's a lot of other artists here on YouTube who review watercolors and I think we all have different ways that we see the world, different lenses. And I'm one of, I think two, I think Owings Art is the other comic artist, but I don't know that he, when he's reviewing watercolors, he's really looking at them at a comics lens, but that's the lens that I'm looking at them through. I paint all of Seven Inch Kara in watercolor. I've been working on Kara for years now. I have two volumes out and I've painted hundreds of watercolor comic pages, both Kara and for anthologies and for contests. So I, I painted a lot of watercolor comics and I really love watercolor and I want to help make it more accessible to people, especially people who are not necessarily looking to do fine art or looking to do abstract art or looking to do floral paintings, all things that people often associate with watercolor. I want to show people that there's a bigger world to watercolor out there and I want to make it more accessible for you guys by reviewing a variety of products and sharing my thoughts and opinions so that you guys can go in with a little bit more um, knowledge about that particular product and knowing how it's going to handle and knowing whether or not it's right for you because what's great for one watercolor artist might be terrible for another watercolor artist. We all have different needs. So 
Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative. Even though we did not have a winner today, hopefully I helped you guys save some money by avoiding something that isn't gonna perform the way you want it to perform and is probably going to disappoint you. You can put the money that you would have spent on this towards a better set that you're gonna really love. And I've got some great reviews here on the channel that'll hopefully maybe introduce you guys to your next favorite watercolor. So if you are new, <laughs> Like I said, and you haven't subscribed yet, I update twice a week. I usually do a tutorial of some sort, whether it's drawing or comics or watercolor or alcohol marker. Those are all things that I love. Um, I usually do a tutorial and I also usually do a review. Uh, sometimes I do two reviews. It just kind of depends on what I've been working on lately. So I update on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and it would really mean a lot to me if you like what you see here, if you click the subscribe button and you click the bell notification so YouTube lets you know when there's something new here on the channel. I also update my Patreon on the public page once a week on Sundays with everything that went live that week. So if you are looking for a way to kind of just see everything that went live, that's a great way to do it. And you can join me over at patreon.com slash soup. All of the money, all the funds raised from Patreon go towards buying more art supplies to review. So if you believe in what I do and you want to help me continue to do this for just $2 a month, you can really help me review more art supplies. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And a huge thanks to my awesome patrons for all their help and support over the years. I look forward to seeing you guys again soon and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye guys!